Tonight on CTV News, construction for the new on-campus stadium will reduce parking. See just how many parking spots will be gone. Plus, renovations in Old Town are making way for a new and improved Old Town Square. Find out when construction starts and see an inside look at how sorority spring recruitment is less formal and more fun. CTV News starts right now. Good evening and thanks for watching this episode of CTV News. I'm Carson Bushjost. And I'm Caitlin Conley. Fort Collins police have arrested a man in connection with a robbery at the West Drake Convenience Store. The store employee said a male wearing a mask entered the store today and demanded cigarettes and cash. Once officers were on the scene, they began investigating when a canine alerted on a parked vehicle. The suspect, 19-year-old Devin Townsend, was inside his vehicle along with evidence from the robbery. Townsend was arrested on suspicion of aggravated robbery. Anyone with any additional information about the incident is asked to call uh, Larimer County <laughs> Crime Stoppers at 970-221-6868. With the building of the new stadium, CSU is predicted to lose more than 1,500 spots. CSU has projects pending in order to create new parking with parking structures around campus. This will not only create more parking, but allow for the transit to bus to and from an overflow lot to campus. As CSU works on parking around campus, students have expressed their worries about the stadium and how CSU plans to incorporate new parking. As of right now, CSU is developing parking projects that are still in the process of getting approved. One is a parking garage over by University Square and an overflow lot over by the Tennis Center. We've got a project in development right now that hasn't been approved, but we're, we're well in the planning process of putting a parking garage over by University Square, which is by, by the Alumni Center. And so that will be an actual garage. And then there's also an overflow lot, which we're looking at building. And again, that needs to be approved. Although these projects are still in the works of being designed and approved, CSU is hopeful that these new structures will help expand parking. This new upcoming lot would allow for transport services between CSU and would run every 15 minutes from the lot to campus. So um, we're definitely moving forward looking toward making this campus a really useful place for people who are biking and walking and using alternative transportation as well as coming up with the best option for people to park their cars. Even with these new spots, CSU still encourages students to use the free transportation as well as to ride their bikes and walk. Other parking limits may also be in the works for Fort Collins. The park and ride lot on Harmony Road might lose its free label. The Colorado Department of Transportation owns the lot and the city of Fort Collins manages it. The two have been floating the idea of tacking on an overnight parking fee to discourage people from storing their vehicles at this location. Earlier talks put fees at a dollar a day after 24 hours, and after a week that fee would jump to three dollars a day. None of these changes are set yet, and City Council would need to vote on an inter intergovernmental agreement before anything can change. Last week we told you about the renovations coming to Old Town Square. This week I got to sit down with two of the directors of the project to get some more information. February 11th, Old Town Square will be getting a facelift after 30 years. The $3 million project will open up the square, making it easier to navigate through heavy pedestrian traffic. Matt Robinall and Todd Dangerfield of the Downtown Development Authority are heading the project. I think that there will be a, a, a great appreciation and hopefully a, a long-term love affair with the plaza. The square will not only be opened up and rearranged, but will have a few added amenities. Added uh, seating areas at the south next to Mountain Avenue and also a fireplace feature that will be on in the midsection of the south. The last renovations of Old Town came in 1985, where before that many of the buildings down here were condemned. In the 60s and 70s, Old Town experienced an economic downturn and businesses struggled. The imagery at that time was really boarded up buildings, um, vacant, uh, vacant pieces of land in between those buildings and uh, that was a big uh, motivator for the community at that time to address those issues. The square was constructed and soon became one of the most beloved and popular spots of the city. After 30 years, most citizens agree that the renovations are a good thing. I think absolutely. I love this place and anything to keep it updated, keep it new. This town is so artsy and wonderful. August is the estimated completion date, right before New West Fest, one of Fort Collins' most popular events. The square will be open during renovations, but changes are soon approaching. 
For more information on the renovations, you can visit downtownfortcollins.org. And in other Old Town news, a Fort Collins organic and vegetarian restaurant will be moving locations by the end of the year. Tasty Harmony has been located on 130 South Mason Street for the last six years. Owner Sasha Steinhauser attributes the move to the rising rent cost. Steinhauser is working on another Old Town location but would not disclose it. For now, Tasty Harmony will remain in its current location until late September or early October, at which point it will move to the new location. Spring recruitment is wrapping up for sororities, and while the process is less formal than fall, it is another opportunity to join a sorority and the benefits of a sisterhood. CTV reporter Sierra Symes covers this year's recruitment. It's spring sorority recruitment season, but outside the chapter houses, you won't hear any singing or see flocks of recruits in matching outfits. Spring sorority recruitment is designed to give a second chance for students who want a more informal entrance into Greek life. It's a lot more like a fraternity recruitment where it's a lot more casual, it's kind of word of mouth. It's like swing by the house, there's no time frame. We had a lot of our new members from the fall really do word of mouth recruitment to a bunch of their friends or girls on the hall or other freshmen who might want to get involved who just really didn't the first semester were kind of scared away by the formal recruitment process. So that's been a great way for us to like really get in touch with a lot of women who were curious about about it at first and now really want to join a chapter. Friendship and mutual support are some of the greatest benefits of sorority involvement. Members are also encouraged to have high GPAs, be involved in community service, and volunteer for a philanthropic cause. Each new member definitely brings a new um, like personality to the house. You get the chance and opportunity to learn their story and learn about where they have been in their lives and why they chose to do go through recruitment and it just gives you the opportunity to make another connection um, on a deeper level with another woman that's now your sister. One of the reasons I joined in the first place was definitely the service and philanthropy. I absolutely love the idea of being able to give back to the community as well as have um, a cause that's near and dear to all of our hearts. To learn more about the Greek Life chapters and recruitment, visit csugreeks.colostate.edu. After the break, Elizabeth Prossi will, will be here with her weather forecast, and I hear we may get some snow. Oh, I'm not too sure about that. I <laughs> don't like snow, and I really like the weather we have right now. But after the weather update, we have the latest in Ram Sports. Don't go away. Oh, hey there, Rams. Today is a great day to play in the LSC. So let's take a look at our ballrooms, theater, and art galleries. The LSC ballrooms, which are the busiest venue in Northern Colorado, have been recently renovated. The Lori Student Center Theater can be transformed to feature films, concerts, lectures, entertainment, and banquets. And last but not least, the Kerfman Gallery provides a showcase for the creations of local and student artists. Welcome back, Rams. I'm weather anchor Elizabeth Prossi with your latest weather update. Now, today was a beautiful and sunny day, but don't let that sunshine fool you because we have a different story tomorrow. Now, looking at the map for tonight, you can see that we're going to get down to 24 in Lamar, 30 degrees in Denver, 33 in Colorado Springs, and then 37 in Pueblo. And then looking at our evening planner, we can see that currently it is 40 degrees here in Fort Collins, and we do have winds coming out of the west at 8 miles per hour. So that wind chill with the partly cloudy skies will be 37 degrees tonight. Now looking at the evening plan, you can see we do have a chance of rain tonight. And that rain will turn into snow in the early morning hours of tomorrow after the atmosphere has had a chance to cool off from today's warm temperatures. Now for Wednesday, looking at the map, we can see where this upper level disturbance is going to be moving through. As you can see, 33 in Lyman, but 30, I'm sorry, 40 degrees in Colorado Springs for the high tomorrow. 34 in Denver, but 49 degrees in Pueblo. Now looking at your Wednesday planner, we see we have a lot of snow in the forecast. Look at this. We've got winds coming in, and then as we hit the middle of the afternoon, it's going to turn into more of a ra freezing rain as we hit that 33 tomorrow, and then tomorrow afternoon will be 27 once we cool back down in the atmosphere. But looking at our seven-day forecast, luckily the snow is not going to stick around. We can see we've got highs in the 60s, and it's going to be a beautiful and sunny week after this brief cold spell. But not to worry, because we're only going to see about one inch of snow tomorrow. Not quite the 40 inches that poor Boston has received this last week. Caitlin Carson, did you know that Boston is supposed to celebrate winning the Super Bowl today? But because of all the snow they've received, they've had to postpone their celebration until tomorrow. It's kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> 
Us being Broncos fans, I'm sure we're not bad, mad about that. New England Patriots fans up there. Kind of feel bad. That's 40 inches. That's a lot. Oh, like I said before, I do not like the snow. Not a fan. So much happier that I'm here and only one inch of snow tomorrow. That sounds a lot better than up in Boston. Exactly. And this is actually the most snow that Boston has seen in a seven day period since 1891. So I'm going to take our one inch tomorrow. I'll take it. <laughs> so much better. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, Grace Reader is in the Sports Center now for her recap on the Super Bowl. That's right, Carson, and she also has the latest in Ram Sports. Grace? Thanks, guys. This weekend, the Patriots defeated the Seahawks in one of the most nail biting Super Bowl games in history. It looked like the Seahawks were going to win, but then Russell Wilson threw an interception at the three yard line. Now, that's probably not news to you, so now we'll talk about CSU Sports. Instead of jumping right in, we're going to start with a question of the night. If you're patient enough to watch until the end of my sports segment, I'll give you the answer. My question of the night is, what is the overall record of the men's CSU basketball team since it began play 24 seasons ago? If you don't get bored in the next two minutes, I'll tell you the answer. While we're on basketball, the men's team will play at Wyoming on Wednesday in Laramie. This game is going to be incredibly important for the Rams as Wyoming has already defeated CSU at home. Wyoming is 18 and 4, while CSU is 19 and 3. However, Wyoming is 7 and 2 in the Mountain West, while CSU is only 6 and 3. Wyoming is certainly the team to beat in order to be at the top of the division. In other sports, the CSU swimming and diving team ended its dual season on Saturday after a big win over Air Force. The team finished with a record of 5 and 4 and ended with back-to-back -back wins. The Rams now have two and a half weeks to prepare for the Mountain West Championship in Texas. Now that you waited patiently for the answer to the question of the night, the CSU basketball team has a record of 463 and 286 over the past 24 seasons. Back to you guys. Thanks, Grace. And after the break, we recap Collegian's top five commercials from the Super Bowl. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. It's cold outside today, Rams. What better way to warm up than to gather in the LSC? The new and improved Senate Chambers located in the renovated ASCSU office was modeled to match the state legislature in Denver. Reserve the Long's Peak Meeting Room in Room 302. There are approximately 23 other new meeting rooms designed for your needs. Reserve one of these rooms through the Event Planning Office. Well, the Super Bowl is the one time viewers get excited for not only football, but the highly anticipated commercials. The price of airing a single 30-second spot during the pod broadcast was $4.5 this year, wow. meaning companies put their best work to the test. Now let's take a look at the Collegian's top five picks. We start out with the Brady Bunch commercial. This was my favorite with Danny Trejo, uh, kind of a throwback. I thought it was funny. Classic with the Bradys. Loved watching those shows. Oh, this was my favorite. Of course. Anytime you throw a puppy into a commercial, that's going to be my favorite, of course. A uh, little bit of a tearjerker, but... Always. The Fiat commercial, uh, where the car gets bigger after the magic pill. <laughs> I thought this was kind of witty and clever. It definitely um, was. The Doritos commercial, this would definitely be a way for someone to get me to sit next to them on a plane, offer me some Doritos. Can't I thought wrong. it was smart. And the Skittles one, they always have the clever commercials, the arm wrestle right there. I think All right, Marshawn Lynch would have really liked that. You said your favorite commercial was the uh, Budweiser dog it commercial. Was. Anytime you put a dog into a commercial, it's going to be my top favorite, as I said before. Love yeah. animals, love the horses, love everything about it. Yeah, there's a lot of good commercials in uh, How About That Halftime Show, Katy Perry. Uh, that was my favorite, besides for Beyonce, of course. But Katy Perry was a really good Halftime yeah. performance. Out for on me. that shooting star, Missy Elliott was there, Lenny Kravitz. It was great. I was a tiger. I loved the beginning when she walked out like right. that. It was great. Well, thanks so much for watching this episode of CTV News. Be sure and watch all our shows on thecollegian.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to download the Collegian app so you can live stream our shows. Have a great night, Rams.